Today, I'm gonna share with you how I shot this using one lens, staying at home. Hey, how's it going guys? Hope you guys are doing well and staying sane because this Verona Kairos, as James Matthew would put it, yeah, it's been it's been a little bit difficult, um, at least from videography perspective and my jobs. Up to about July, I, all my jobs been canceled, guys. Um, so I'm trying to keep up with videography, you know, keep practicing to keep up with my skills. So I thought, what better way than to actually practice on product videography? Because as you guys know, this thing, you can actually do it at home, and this could be the future of videography. Next time there's a zombie apocalypse, you'd be 100% ready. As zombies are gnawing at your front door, you could be like, Hey man, stop interrupting. I'm trying to film this spam over here. Oh, that's a good shot. So that could spare your life. Just kidding, spam's not good for you, and they're not hiring right now. Joke aside guys, I am really trying to diversify my videography income because I think product videography definitely has a future in it because you really don't need a lot of setup. I really didn't purchase anything extra guys. I literally gathered up everything that I just had and just rented like one special lens. That Lawa 24mm Macro Pro lens you saw, I did rent it from LensRentals.com. This video is not sponsored by them, but I really love them. I've been using them for like two years, so I do recommend them. I'll leave a link below, so definitely check it out. They have a lot of stuff sales going on and coupon codes like everywhere so so going into this video shoot I knew that lens was a very unique in a way as a $1,500 lens also so I didn't want to actually buy it without trying it and I'm glad I rented it you see my background on using a macro lens is Sony 90 millimeter f 2.8 that lens is so sharp and it's so easy to use I usually use it for a wing shot on my wedding videos and it does really well in the dark so when I rented this lens there were definitely some challenges with this lens which I'll share throughout this video so I'm gonna break this video down in three segments going backwards segment three is gonna be something called Q&A with say you like that kind of rhymes I just came up with that in this segment I'm gonna share with you how and where I get my creative ideas from along with how do I plan my b-roll sequence in segment two I'm gonna break down all the scenes and tell you guys what kind of gear I use for each of the scenes and as usual everything you see in this video I'll leave a link below in the description and first but not least in the first segment I'm gonna go over about this 24 millimeter Lawa Pro lens and what kind of things you need to know before renting it or buying it so the biggest challenge with this lens is the fact that the widest aperture you have on this lens is f14 I don't know if you guys ever shot an f14 in a broad daylight and even a little bit of cloud coverage will get the scene real dark so you can imagine how much light you need for this lens and to make it even worse I wanted to shoot this whole entire thing at 120 frames per second which means that my shutter had to be 1 over 250 making the whole entire thing even darker luckily though I did have a camera that's really good in the dark and that's Sony a7 my ISO was between 3200 and 4000 even at 120 frames per second at 1080p the image was fairly clean I mean what do you guys think I didn't use any noise removal tools on those so that is actual footage I got so if you ever use this this lens you're gonna need some powerful key light to pull that kind of shot off so the light I use is called Godas SL60W it's a daylight balance light that produces 4500 lumens of light it's like a projector basically I didn't use any softbox on my key light because I did actually need like full power on that key light I was at 90% brightness my fill light was a bicolor Genray contender it's a very compact light that you can put batteries on it it doesn't get in the way because uh, obviously the SL60W is a huge light with a big light stand it got on the way a Lot, so I need something smaller for the fill light it was perfect for that scenario and as a backlight I use Yongyo YN 360 mark 3 it's an RGB light wand that creates all kinds of light colors in addition I use bowling p1 vlogger light and that's this RGB light is pretty small and this also is an RGB light you can change colors on and the advantage of this size is that you can actually place this behind a product to create that rim light effect so let's look at the montage again and break down each of the scenes. So this opening scene up, opening the bottle, I wanted to make it loopable because I knew it was for Instagram and you know how Instagram video it just keeps repeating itself. So I started with this dark background and I knew in my head I was going to end up in a dark background. And before I explain how I got this shot, let's go ahead and get our mind out of the gutter first because uh, here's how I got this shot. 
So I wanted to get the lens inside my finger like this. So as I use this thing right here, this is Edelkron Slider 1 version 2, and it's an app-driven slider that goes back and forth automatically with the phone app, so once you set it, it just keeps repeating itself. So it was going in and out. <laughs> okay. Okay, I can't do this. <clears throat> So it was going in and out of my finger, and as it was going in, you see the dark background, and as it was coming out, you see my finger, and it was kind of like a reveal shot. And the mist that you see as I'm opening the bottle is actually fake, because obviously I probably did that like five, six takes, and by the time you miss the first shot, you're out of the mist. So I added that in After Effects. The effect is called CC Particle Systems. I'm not gonna go into it in depth right now, because it's gonna be a long video, but you'll see this in the future again. And the smoke you saw at the tip of the bottle is also fake. That's actually a stock footage. So that footage worked out really well. I could have spent a little bit more time on post refining things here a little bit because did you see my hand? I mean, this is a problem during pandemic. I've been washing my hands so much. <laughs> my hand is so dry. Is anyone else having this problem? <laughs> I wonder how the hand models are doing these days because man, this, this thing look ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, my fingers also look like Ninja Turtles. I mean, like 24 millimeter macro probe it warps everything at the front if you're really close so yeah uh, those fingers a little stubby there <laughs> so to get to the next scene I decided to cut on action what I mean by that is if you want to create momentum yet cut smoothly if you cut on action and show the reaction afterwards in our brain it is a smooth shot but you're gonna gain that pace onto the next scene which is what I done here on this shot I wanted to take advantage of the fact that the front end of the probe lens is waterproof and just to get that couple seconds of footage I did ton of work on this one. First, to get to the inside of the bottle, I did have to cut the bottle off. It's aluminum, and I also thought I was gonna make this cool B-roll of like sparks flying, and this happened. Yeah, there's no spark flying, but I could do this. Uh, you see what I did there? Yep, CC particle systems. Really cool effect in After Effects. So after I cut the bottle up, I used two magic arm. Magic arm is basically something like this. They don't call this magic for no reason. I mean, you need this thing in your toolbox at all times to do many things. But I basically used two of those to grab onto the bottle and I rubber banded top and bottom so it's very secure in there. So as I'm tilting the whole entire rig, the whole thing was very firmly secure. And I also took advantage of the fact that the Pro Lens has LED lights at the front element and you could easily power this LED with the power bank but the only downside here is that the LED light was not daylight balanced it had this yellowish tint at the temperature I would say probably around 3800 to 4000 and the CRI index is about below 85 which means that it does not render color realistically but I made it work for this scene okay so the next scene is pretty cool too because I completely submerged the front end of the lens into the drink <laughs> if you guys see my last video I mean I handheld this lens for like 40 different takes so I was very comfortable holding this handheld so I thought I just completely handhold it and submerged the whole lens into the drink and I did all I had to do was basically stand up and do some squats on top of it like this yeah you want you oh you want to see that again okay here we go all those leg days it pays off man so the way I edit this whole entire thing I used the water squashing around from the scene before to mask out the whole thing but the key of tastefully masking this any or anything really is to quickly show two scenes really quick instead of just one a basic masking would have been like just one mask right so advanced masking would have been like one mask scene scene mask again so your eyes just can't keep up with it and it looks pretty cool so that's exactly what I did so I masked the drink first and then just quickly show a bubbles right after that I mask the ice and then after that I show the pineapple split which is the next scene so for this scene I use the Edelkron slider again going back and forth and just like before I put a hole in the pineapple put the lens back okay we you stop it you get the picture so there's a problem though when the pineapple split and it hit the table the whole entire table shook you know it's this actually same table and no matter how many takes I did table always shook so what I did on post is actually enhance the flaw of the whole entire scene I just added a bass hit on the sound effects and boom problem solved so lesson here is that if you have a flaw in your shot and you're gonna just throw it out take a look again and see how you can enhance the flaw to make it actually good so don't toss it before you base it so the next scene is 
is probably the hardest scene. It's the double pouring scene. This one, I did use the Bowling P1 Vlogger as a backlight to kind of highlight the bottles and get the colors going. And I did consider this to be my finale, so I wanted to make it juicy, you know? To make any drink juicy looking, you want to mist it to make it sweat. So usually you would actually spray glycerin to this kind of product to make it sweat but not drip down so much. But because of the pandemic and I couldn't go outside, I used something else. I noticed that hand sanitizer had glycerin in it. So I put some hand sanitizer in a bottle and I just spray that and that was like half of my budget for the shoot because each spray probably was like five dollars. <laughs> so we probably did about seven takes on this scene because it was really hard to like pour and time the whole thing perfectly as the lens was going through it. And we did so many takes, we kind of ran out of drink. So we used Soda Stream to kind of imitate this drink. And even then, we ran out of Soda Stream gas at the end, like there was no fizz on top of the drink. So where did that bubble fizz come from? Guess what effect that was? CC particle systems. But my wife didn't know about that effect, so we did do a lot of takes, so I should probably thank her. Yeah, she's not the sponsor of this video, but I like to thank my wife for making this video possible and burning the midnight oil because yeah, it was like 4 a.m. by the time we finished. <laughs> so for the next shot, I did let her go sleep for this scene, but the closing scene is a spinning bottle scene, right? So for this scene, I used a motorized spin display with two different speed settings. So I just put the drink in the middle and just kept spinning it. And I used the Edelkron slider to go back and forth, back and forth. But for this one, I missed the heck out of it because I wanted to see that sweat just drip down the bottle. And I was gonna use the sound effects to enhance that. And speaking Speaking of sound effects, that's like a whole entire separate video by itself. So by the time I post this on YouTube, I'm gonna do a special Instagram story showing you all the sound effects I use. So you'll be able to see at least what's going on in the sound timeline. So at the end of that scene, it loops us back to the first scene, which is starting from that dark background, if you guys remember. And now this allows me to circle back to the topic. How did I come up with this idea and the B-roll sequence? And lucky for me, this is an answer to Q&A I did on my Instagram account. This is actually the first time of me doing this. So if you purchase Thank you so much guys. So Pauline and Paul, um, they're actually two different people by the way. I don't call Paul Pauline and vice versa. Pauline asks, what is your creative process? How do you generate ideas? Well, Pauline, for me, creativity and ideas comes from embracing the limitation. And what I mean by that, Pauline, is sometimes when I'm out of ideas or creativity, I force myself and limit myself to drive me to the next step. In this instance, I purposely used one lens, even though I could have used multiple lenses to make it easier and make it look better even. But by forcing myself to use one lens, what I essentially have done is look at the lens limitation that I have and drive the next scene with the capability of this lens which actually is waterproof right so there are a lot of scenes in this video that kind of emulated that if that makes sense and Paul asked the same thing Paul asked what is the best way to plan out b-rolls and figure out your shot and the principle here is the same if looking around and figuring out b-roll sequences is not working out you look at the gear you have and see the capability of the gear to see where that drives you and this is why letting the videographer do the work rather than telling him or her exactly what to do works out so much better in terms of creativity and I will just keep practicing on that and you be gold. And the next question is from Sarath, and Sarath asks, Thanks for inspiring and teaching all the time. Can you help us with LHLG setting and edit? Well, Sarath, if you ask me like that, of course, yes. So as some of you guys know on Sony camera, Picture Profile 10 is LHLG. So the setting that I use is LHLG 3. It is a perfect balance between giving you the most dynamic range. At the same time, it gives you the most color baked in. So you don't have to work as hard on post to color grade. And I will recommend BT 2020 instead of Rec 709. I find that Rec 709 is really hard on the skin color. It becomes all red and stuff. So BT 2020 is really good, especially if you use LUT made for Cineforce. Now there are so many good questions asked on that Instagram story, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna cut there. I'm gonna save these questions for the later video videos because yeah I definitely have some videos relating exactly what you guys asked so stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching guys if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up on your way out it makes a huge difference hope to see you in the next video make it a good one guys later